I'll tell you, the S197s, we've got uh, a couple. I don't have a lot of choices because I only stick with what I like, what I know, what I use. And we've got at the, you know, at, at the uh, at the, the street street performance end, we've got a really nice uh, coilover package uh, that's uh, non-adjustable, uh, great for street performance and touring, even even good for track days. Has like around a 400 maybe front uh, spring rate. Then we've got the RSS package, which is uh, really popular. Fronts fronts are adjustable, the rears are not. Uh, but it, it's it's a, it's like a 630 spring rate, but the shocks are so good it doesn't feel like that. I mean, th those are you know, are, are kind of uh, cost-effective packages. But when we get into coilovers, what we've got right now is our premium coilover package, which are JRZs that I have custom built for me in the Netherlands, and, they, and then they ship them over. And but the, th the thing is. I mean, they're like a little more expensive. I mean, quite a little more expensive. Not as expensive as the motor torque shocks, but they're a little more expensive. So we needed to come up with something in between. The reason is because my new uh, AGS 4.5, new K-Link rear suspension, uh, that creates so much grip at the back that to, to rebalance the car, we have to go up significantly on rear spring rate. And what we found is any of the, the off-the-shelf, you know, uh, cost-effective packages that we use, uh, won't take any more than like 100 pounds extra spring rate on, on the existing shocks. So that means that we've got to, had to come up with a different solution. So we went to our friends up at Strange, and Strange already custom builds uh, uh, shocks for SN95 for me. And uh, it's kind of strange, <laughs> no pun intended, but uh, Strange is like they're 99.98% drag racing, period. So, I mean, to, when people tell people we get you know, strange builds my shocks, they uh, drag racing people. Well, in, uh, in this case, uh, we needed we needed a new shock partner because we were using Coney's, but the time for the rear of the IRS, but at the time it was taking forever to get turnaround on them uh, because their, their race customers got priority and it was taking like sometimes a month and a half, two months just to get shocks built. So we went to Strange, and I went up there. I got a notebook, all these different shock dials I've collected over, you know, a lot of years. And I sat down with Dimitri for shock dial. I said, you know, this is kind of what I'm looking for. And I laid out a couple of different shock dials uh, as far as valving strategy. And he looked at it and said, yeah, we can do that. So you know, long story short, the uh, Strange does uh, our uh, IRS uh, shock packages, uh, custom valve to my specifications. And... And the, we the, only to come double adjustable in the front, but they can be a single or double adjustable in the back for the IRS. We also can use those for, uh, we have a different valving for the IRS or for the live axle cars and IRS. But IRS takes a lot more spring and a lot more shock. Anyway, so uh, we I, we called up to uh, to JC at Strange and said, you know, can we build this for S197? They said, well, we don't have a shock to S197. So, uh, they, we, but we, they, they do build it for drag racing. So, we, what they're doing is they're putting the exact same valving package that we have for the SN95 into the S197 package. So we got the fronts, which are uh, double adjustable, and then the rear, uh, either single or double adjustable. Anybody that has the K-Link, we're going to double adjustable. It has a little bit more uh, capability uh, on, on tuning uh, uh, for you know getting the car to work a little better. But... The, the thing is, we really had to work to get these coilovers on the back. What we found is, like, there's not a lot of room. Now, the, the JRZs just barely fit because they use a two-and-a-quarter spring. Uh, the strange are two-and-a-half spring diameter, which uh, makes it kind of tight. So what we've done is we actually we worked with one of our customers on this. We actually convert, rather than using the, the right standard bayonet fitting on top, go through the top, we actually use rod ends on both ends, and we have this extra bracket. And what we do is we offset the bracket. We offset the shock in the bracket, and, I mean, it's just, it, it, it's a tight fit. In fact, there's a couple little, you know, body panels. I mean, I'm not talking big things, and like, like little sheet metal. It has to be trimmed up a little bit, but they do fit. And if you've got somebody that's got really big tires, uh, then what we'll do is we'll just use the shock, and we, we do have a way to put a higher spring rate on axle. Uh, and on axle spring rate has to be higher than the uh, spring rate on the shock just because of what's called motion ratio. 
Uh, that's the di difference between the, the center of the axle to the shock versus the spring on axle. If, if you're in the academy, you'll learn all about that and how to figure motion ratio. So anyway, this, this is the package we threw out for the rear. As you can see, it's got double adjustable on the bottom, uh, spherical bearing on the bottom, spherical bearing on the top. It does require a little bit of modification to get it to fit, but we, we do, they do fit, which is a big plus. So, and then, <laughs> it's a big plunk. And this is the, the, the front coilover that they mix double adjustable. You can see the bump adjustments on the bottom, rebound adjustment on top. And I had to, uh, the reason, if you are a spring and shock package for me, it's going to come just like this. It's going to come pre-assembled and it's, they're going to be pre-adjusted to a base adjustment that you can start with. Now, the thing is, the reason we do that is like, I, I have to get the, the spacing right to get the, 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 the uh, cam camber plates on. Uh, all these shocks are different. And we any time in the past uh, that we've sent like uh, just drop ship shocks and parts to the customer, uh, I'm on the phone, you know, a number of times trying to get them to help, help get them through how to set the thing up. So rather than that, I mean, you can get them from me. They're assembled, they're ready to install. It's the rear shocks, the front shocks, and they're pre-adjusted to what I, I think the settings should be. And the other thing is I personally pick for every single coilover customer, I personally spring pick the spring rate based off the use of the car. And the cool thing about uh, coilovers is like, if we get a coilover set up for somebody who's doing mostly street with a teeny bit of track, and all of a sudden they say, well, I want to do more track and we'll move up from novice to intermediate. Boom, we just, you know, it's a piece of cake, you know, pop the spring up and new spring on. So changing spring rates is really easy. Uh, and when we're racing, we'll have like whole shelves full of springs. We can change spring rates to get the cars to work. So I mean, if this is good news. We do have a we do have a cost effective uh, setup for for S197. So anyway, and then the other cool thing is when you get your shocks, you will get a setup sheet. Uh, this is kind of a sample of the setup sheet that you get. What's listed on here is the, the shocks, the spring rates, uh, helper spring, whether it's got a sway bar or not, and bump and rebound adjust and recommended uh, sway bar setting. Uh, and we've got, we, we're going to add a line now. We're going to have added a line for the K-Link because the K-Link is, that's another thing that you have to talk to me about. Because the K-Link, we, I, again, we have to get the spring rates, rear spring rate close to the front spring rate. Also, depending on what size tire, the diameter of the tire, will dictate what size radius rods that we use to get the right roll center. Uh, 